Hey, this is Jake Taylor from In Hearts Wake, and you're watching Antihero Online. You guys are the second Australian band that I have talked to this week. Who was the first? Uh, any, what is it, Ob- Obliscris? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, Obliviaris. They, or their something. name is so hard to say. Yeah. How's the U.S. been treating you so far? It's good. U.S. is always amazing. Really good. Like I'm a, I'm a U.S. citizen, so I've come to this country many times over my life, and to bring a band here that I play in, and play with my family attending in like like in New York City and stuff. It's it's I can't even describe how cool it is. And uh, the band's fourth studio album, Arc, was just released this past April. Tell me a little bit about the success of the album. Yeah, so we're touring it worldwide for the first time, and uh, we've been able to headline in Europe, UK, America, and take our Australian shows to the biggest that we've ever taken them. So uh, it's very exciting. And with, uh, with a decline in physical sales for the music industry, we're seeing like a boom in uh, digital, yeah. uh, for instance, Spotify and streaming. So it's, uh, it's an interesting time to be in a band because you can't rely on those numbers to see projections anymore. So instead, it's all about the people that turn up and like the reactions. And that's the really cool thing in this, in this little, uh, uh, in this space between as they make the transition. So it's cool. Yeah, that's awesome. And what was the creative process like for the band when you were recording the new album? Uh, we actually flew Will Putney from New York City, or New Jersey, sorry, flew him over to Byron Bay, Australia, where we live, and we recorded it in our bass player's uncle's home studio, which is pretty much four walls. <laughs> and we recorded it all there, and we got to sleep at home in our beds every night. So that was really a, a new take on recording. It was sick. And what was Ben's kind of mentality going into producing this new record? The mentality? Well, we wanted to create something that we hadn't yet created, and we also wanted to pull all the tricks uh, that we had learned on our previous three into a culmination of like a just a solid metacore release with elements of rock coming through. Um, so I definitely feel that we achieved that, and uh, who knows what, what will come, but uh, I'd love to experiment now further as we grow as a band. And talking about the metal scene in Australia, Australia is a huge country. Is it difficult for you to kind of like cut through and shine when the country is so big and it's hard to tour in certain areas? Yeah, it's not It's not hard to... Okay, the hardest part of cutting through is, is having experience. And that comes with playing many shows. Um, obviously, gaining the funds to record records and to, and to come over here. You have to work twice as hard, if not five times as hard. We've got six cities to play in. You guys got 50 something. So if you want to tour and yeah, I guess make a sustainable living, even you have to get on a plane and get over here and that costs a lot of money. So I hate to talk about money so much, but it's a huge thing about oh, yeah. us Australian bands is how do we do it? Um, but you can get, I feel like the diamonds stand out easier because Australia is so, uh, it's such a tight, small scene. So the true gems stand out. But, uh, but that's it's one thing having good songs it's another having a group that can travel the world and how to do that oh yeah and um, my phone isn't loading out of the four albums which song is your favorite to play and why it's changing all the time it forever is every audience treats a song differently and that has a huge impact on my experience of playing the song not an easy question to answer survival He's always got the best crowd reaction because it's just fast, fun, hardcore song that we wrote five years ago. But I'd also say Divine because it just gets some vibes happening, which is good. Girls get into it as well, and it's a bit more groove. And talking about the streaming and the new record a little bit, the single off of the album, War, uh, what is it, War Cry? is creeping on the door of a million streams on Spotify. That'll be your third single to hit that. What goes through your head when you hear that? It's just, I mean, it's awesome, but it's just numbers. I don't know. It's, it counts for something, but I think a real band and real songs count for how they translate on a stage with the crowd. Because there could be some person in Russia with an algorithm just <laughs> repeating the song for all I know. And it's just numbers, and you don't feel any different between one stream and a million, to be honest. It's all about what happens on that stage and that reaction and that experience. And what you keep bringing up the experience. What is the band's experience on stage and how does that translate out to the crowd? Well, I get, often get lost in the music half the time when I'm playing. It becomes not like a trance or a use of a better word. 
you kind of lose a sense of time because it's not just about the five guys on the stage playing together, it is about the crowd and it's about exp the experience together. And I don't know, you just, um, when you're vibing it, you're vibing it, that's all I can say. And I just, I love being aware of all the things happening, this guy crowd surfing, someone said something funny, Carl hit a funny note, yeah. or he did something amazing, it's just all happening at once and you're very present. And I really love that experience about music. And the tour is going until the end, mid, end of December. What's the plan going into 2018? The plan going into 2018 is catch as many waves as we can at home, enjoy the sun because it is summer, and just recharge the batteries and get a nice perspective before coming back on the road in 2018. We've got, we're going to be coming to Europe, America, doing Australia all over again, so it's going to be a big year. And festival season is going to kick off too. Is there any opportunities out there for festivals? Um, there's a couple. There's a couple. There's always opportunity, but I th we've all, we already know where we're going to be up until this time next year. So I can't say too much. Can't say too much. Yeah, that's fine. I understand that. And is there any potential of new music coming out anytime soon? Are you guys noodling around with anything, kicking some ideas? We just dropped a cover of a band called Silverchair. They're a very influential '90s band in Australia. And we cover their song called Freak. We've got a film clip coming out the, any, any day this week, actually. It should be on AP online, but I'm sure by this time this is out, you can check the link out, but it's called Freak. And we put our twist on it and we shot the film clip to it on the road in Europe in the venues that were all graffitied and dingy in the bathrooms you were trying to shower in. <laughs> and then we just made it as creepy and as weird as possible. Kind of fits the tone of the, the yeah. song too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and There's a freak right there. <laughs>